My daughter cost $1,942.88. More accurately, my daughter's birth cost two separate payments of $971.44. Now, comparatively, that's a great bargain. Two grand has never brought, bought me such unbounded, unrelenting happiness. My car costs like nine times that, and it's got a crack in the windshield, and every two years I need to get the compressor replaced. It was a week after we brought our daughter home, just before Christmas, when my wife got a call from Kaiser. We owed $971.44 for unpaid expenses related to our daughter's birth. But we already paid that before we left the hospital, my wife told the person on the other end, to whom this startling revelation meant absolutely nothing. Sleepless and unable to muster the energy to argue, we begrudgingly paid the duplicate fee, but I couldn't help but wonder, if we didn't pay, what would they do? Send a repo man? Put my daughter back in? I mean, surely by this point she's grown slightly too big for her previous dwelling, like a hermit crab. And if charging money for the birth felt bizarre, the installments made it feel like we were buying a refrigerator. Could we put our daughter on layaway? <laughs> money wasn't the only thing I didn't understand going into the birth process, and this dawned on me in full as I sat in the car in the patient pickup area, minutes away from my wife and three-day-old daughter being wheeled out, YouTubing a tutorial on how to install the car seat that had been haphazardly thrown in the back seat months ago. Did I install it properly? How do you adjust the straps? I knew none of it, and the guy in the video was operating at a pace that could be generously described as leisurely. <laughs> hey, YouTube tutorial guy, my, we gotta hustle. A nurse is on her way to the car with my wife and baby, and if this car seat isn't ready to go in the next three minutes, they might take the baby away and tell us through squinted eyes and a sneer, oh, so sorry, we've made a mistake. We're going to give her to someone who has their shit together. <laughs> And no, our daughter wasn't early. She arrived exactly on her due date. We are just procrastinators. <laughs> My wife's water broke around 11 p.m. on December 13th, 2020. We lounged around the house for a few hours. I hopped on my computer to wrap up a few loose ends at work. She hopped in the shower so that her hair would be clean for the post-birth photos, you know, complete with matching outfits for her and the baby for the inevitable social media celebration. Double check the contents of our bug out bag, although at this pace it was more of a saunter out bag. After a few hours we decided, yeah, might as well go to the hospital. It'll probably just be a few hours. We'll be home by dinner. The text chain was notified. We put our spare key out for whoever was feeding the cats. And now that I think about it, I, I don't actually know that we had anyone feeding our cats, but <laughs> they were alive by the time we got home. So no harm, no foul. And we headed to the hospital. They admitted my wife immediately while I waited in the lobby for confirmation that yes, this was going to happen. Young Sheldon was playing on the lobby TV <laughs> at 3 a.m. <laughs> Young Sheldon is a bizarre prequel to the wildly popular sitcom The Big Bang Theory, a show to which my feelings can best be summarized with an enthusiastic, no thank you. As I sat watching Young Sheldon at 3 a.m., I asked myself, who's watching Young Sheldon at 3 a.m.? Why did the network find it profitable to add this time slot to the show's syndication? Who could possibly be justifying this decision? Me. I'm the reason. My viewership in that moment earned that goofy kid his residuals. My only experience with Young Sheldon lives and dies in this unknowable purgatory between my wife being admitted for childbirth and my being allowed to join her. A bizarre fever dream as the reality of our situation finally began to settle over me, to become a part of me, knowing that in a few short hours I would forever be a father. You know, this identity would be grafted to me as inexorable and interwoven to my being as young Sheldon's bow tie to his. This kid is a genius, I thought. Young Sheldon has it all figured out, and he's like seven. I'm pushing 40, and I have no idea what I'm in for. The birth did not go smoothly. Now, this game is a surprise to us both. She had back labor, which I understand now, is incredibly painful. That's because our daughter was, as they so delightfully euphemize it, sunny side up. 
which meant her skull was pushing aggressively into my wife's tailbone from the inside. And labor would be long, slow, and uncomfortable. After about 18 hours of labor, I was allowed a single get out of jail free pass, a literal yellow card, which I could present once, and as the nurses emphasized, only once to leave and return. Now, COVID policies were stringent, and they only wanted me to catch it once before returning to the hospital. <laughs> I ran home, showered briefly, perhaps I fed our cats, and grabbed a few more essentials, including my Nintendo Switch. I thought naively that my wife and I could pass some time playing Mario Kart while we waited our daughter's arrival. Again, just, whew, just unprepared on all accounts. I returned to the hospital, sent the requisite follow-up text to friends and family, no baby yet, and we waited. Well, more ac accurately, I waited. My wife was in excruciating pain and working so damn hard to push this baby out of her, and there was truly nothing I could do. It was David versus Goliath, except David was back rubs and you can do it, <laughs> and Goliath was the face-melting pain of back labor. They brought in two specialists to try to flip the baby. Huh, I thought, I bet they'll massage her belly and try to coax the baby to flip over. No. <laughs> Massaging the belly would not be in the cards. Flipping the baby is, I would venture, the process by which the term invasive procedure was, in, was coined. I do recall at one point wondering where the majority of the nurse's arm had gone. After a second unsuccessful attempt to flip our little yolk, it became clear that she had pooped in there, which, as the nurse informed us, meant that our daughter, still inside my wife, thought she was on the outside, and the clock was ticking. The hazy hypotheticals of potential parenthood snapped into focus as the nurse gave my wife a choice. You can keep pushing, or you can take a nap. Either way, you're going to have a C-section in an hour and a half. My wife opted for the nap. She'd earned it. I held her hand. Exhaustion took hold. She slept. I worried. C-section. You know, net yet another thing we had not anticipated. Even though we knew one-third of babies are delivered by C-section, we didn't plan to do it. And the thought of it happening just honestly never even entered our minds. I scrubbed up and joined my wife and a team of doctors and nurses in the operating room. A fleeting thought entered my mind. These floors are very clean. Do they hire somebody to mop up the blood immediately after every procedure? Is it like a barber shop where they sweep the hair between cuts and leave it in a dustpan until it gets full? Is there a mop bucket in the corner that needs emptying? Now, my wife had already been dosed with a series of highly effective painkillers and was feeling OK. Nervous, uncertain, but brave beyond belief, braver than I'd ever be under these circumstances. And I could offer her nothing except my presence, which felt as invaluable as well a Nintendo Switch and a maternity ward. <laughs> the fact that the doctors were talking about the TV shows that they had been watching while they cut my wife open and removed her organs to make a pathway for our daughter calmed my nerves. Just another day on the job for them. None of them are watching Young Sheldon, by the way. <laughs> Within minutes, I heard from beyond the privacy drape, the doctors say they had the baby. What followed was an excruciatingly nerve-wracking pause. I didn't hear a baby. Movies had prepared me for a cry, a full-throated declaration, I'm here, you assholes, and I'm cold! But no. Beeps, yes. Murmurs from the medical team, yes. They were no longer talking about their TV shows. Panic started to fall over me. I was frozen, my eyes locked on my wife, who was looking at me with tears in her eyes mainly from the exhaustion, I know, but also from the pain, the drugs, the uncertainty of it all. Finally, after an endless eternity, which was quite likely a measly 10 seconds in total, I heard our daughter cry, a sound as foreign as it was familiar. Time caught back up like a tape measure reeling itself back in. My wife and I burst into full cathartic sobs. I was invited to the other side of the room to cut the umbilical cord, which, of course, had already been cut because they're not going to string an umbilical cord from my wife's flayed stomach to the bassinet on the other side of the room. I mean, it would be a tripping hazard. 
I ceremoniously and cynically cut the already cut umbilical cord and looked back towards my wife. That's when I saw a doctor holding something large and red in his hands, like you would a wet rag, and begin to put it back inside her belly. I resisted the urge to faint or vomit. I don't know what it was, a liver, a pancreas, an actual stomach? Who knows? I doubt the doctors know. They just got everything out of the way and put it back in. I was ushered to a recovery room, and a nurse handed me our daughter. And I was in love. I will never forget holding her for the first time. Her eyes slightly crossed, her red and white striped cap making her look like a tiny elf just in time for Christmas. Her mouth forming into an endless variety of shapes that she adjusted to. It dawned on me, air? You know, she spent nine months as a fish, and now she's whatever the opposite of a fish is. I remember every detail in photographic clarity. Then they wheeled my wife in, and reality said it. I handed our daughter to my wife, but because she had a cocktail of painkillers coursing through her, they would make the cast of Euphoria jealous. <laughs> she fell asleep within seconds. Moments before, the memory of first holding my daughter etched itself deep into my psyche, and my wife, who fought and pushed and screamed and bled and broke herself, for over 32 hours, barely remembers first holding her, first meeting her. She did everything. And the grand payoff, the prize at the end, the moment it was all meant to lead towards, she never got. To have given your entire body and being and not have the strength left for that moment, it's cruel, heartbreaking. The dope who brought Mario Kart to the hospital shouldn't be the one to get the prize. <laughs> Simply not fair. We spent the next two and a half days in the postpartum wing. Now, because we were in the thick of COVID, we were expressly forbidden to leave our little room for the entirety of our stay, not even to stretch our legs in the hallway. Everything had to be called for. And the nurses made it a point to let us know that they did not appreciate being called in for such trivialities as a glass of water so I don't die of dehydration, please. <laughs> a parade of nurses came through our tiny room during our stay, each with a different and conflicting piece of clinical advice for raising a newborn. A different way to swaddle the baby, all of which fail. Our daughter is an escape artist, which is odd because she had a hell of a time escaping from her mother. A different foolproof way to get her to latch, and it hit me. Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Doctors don't, nurses don't, lactation consultants don't, parents don't, I definitely don't. And not for lack of trying or training, there's just no one right answer to basically anything. So nobody has a damn clue, and we're all out here faking and acting like everything's fine. And to be clear, we were prepared. We read the books, we took the classes, we bought the things. And so many friends told us, don't have your birth plan set in stone because you never know what'll happen. And we took that to heart. We were so prepared for everything to happen that we weren't prepared for anything to happen. So when we were released under the condition that the good people at Kaiser receive an initial payment of $971.44, <laughs> my mind and body gave out, sure. Why not? It was the final straw of absurdity after days of absurdities upon absurdities. But because I didn't have $971.44 in my bank account, again, unprepared, out came the credit card. At least our daughter got us some bonus miles. <laughs> we didn't get the cute, insta-worthy post-birth photos, proof that it all went perfectly. I'm glad we didn't. Besides, I like our photos better. Raw, pained, tired, excited, fucking terrified, in love. Even though we don't know what the fuck we're doing. AJ Knox, everyone. AJ Knox.